periodically uh, here at Zen West uh, for members and associates, I'll run what's called a meditation challenge. This is a 21-day commitment where people sign up to practice consistently for 21 days. If you come here often at all, one of the things that I talk about over and over again is the significance, the, um, the value of consistency in practice. Meditation is a wonderful thing. And if we do a little bit of it, if we just come here once a week, every Tuesday evening, we find that it has some wonderful sort of analgesic qualities. Maybe we feel a little bit more relaxed. Many people talk about the uh, sort of Wednesday morning glow after a Tuesday evening sit. But it's important to understand that this little... Uh, blissful, nice feeling is not the uh, limit or is not the maximum capacity of the impact that meditation practice can have on our lives. In fact, in a lot of ways, from the perspective of Zen, uh, it's kind of a side effect, really. The power of practice uh, really hits home or really starts to uh, be felt when we begin to practice consistently, daily. I often talk about that doing five minutes of sitting meditation practice every day is always going to be more effective than sitting for two hours in a day and then not doing it again for a couple of weeks or a week. One of the things that zazen, seated meditation, is very effective at is settling the mind. Even if we've only just started sitting, even if we've only just begun to sit, just the first couple of minutes, Right away, as soon as we take up this posture, we find ourselves in a quiet room, we'll notice that we are not so quiet on the inside. Our bodies can be making all kinds of noises, distractions. Our minds and our hearts are making all kinds of noises and distractions, making plans worrying about things, remembering. As we sit, some of those uh, distractions begin to settle. I, I like to point out, though, that contrary to what we think, that distractions are always necessarily a uh, an unnecessary or a bad thing, that we have these mental and physical distractions for a reason. We give rise to them for a reason. They are not just random distractions for no reason. They have a purpose to distract us from. Living as a human being can be a difficult, upsetting, dissatisfactory, uh, vulnerable thing. Each of us has our hopes and dreams. Each of us has our uh, miseries and sufferings. Since the time we were young children, we've learned to use physical distractions and mental distractions and emotional distractions to draw us away from the things that frighten us, from the things that we feel could hurt us, from the things, maybe from the things that would really force us to change.
As we continue to sit, particularly if we sit consistently every day, these distractions, little bit by little bit, diminish. Little bit by little bit, even the ones that sort of are persistent and continue, we begin to get some space on them. We're not completely wrapped up in them, completely engulfed by them. We can witness them. We can know them, but not be immersed in them. And we continue to settle deeper and deeper into our bodies, deeper and deeper into the activity that's unfolding in front of us in this moment, this activity of our life. It doesn't take very long engaging in this practice. If we sit for 15 minutes a day, every day, we'll find that within a matter of weeks, we begin to feel in a way that we haven't perhaps in many years. But this isn't always a pleasant thing. The distractions that we've kept ourselves entertained with, the distractions that we have uh, kept ourselves from feeling with, settle. And we begin to come face to face with the problem, with the things that scare us, with the things that make us uncomfortable, with the uncomfortable and sometimes unpleasant truth that we need to change or a circumstance needs to change. This is often where people who have started to meditate decide that something else would be better than meditation. Maybe I should take up an instrument, or maybe I should uh, go do some yoga, or maybe I should um, go backpacking somewhere. The trouble is, whether you choose to take up an instrument or whether you choose to uh, go backpacking, no matter where you go, these uncomfortable and unpleasant truths go with you. Regardless of the refinement of your distraction or the increase in potency of your distraction, these uncomfortable and unpleasant truths don't go away. They just get louder. And pretty soon, thinking isn't enough. Pretty soon, uh, television or reading or eating or gosh, kitten videos on YouTube just aren't enough. And soon alcohol isn't enough. And soon sex isn't enough. And these uncomfortable and unpleasant truths burst forth into the consciousness of our everyday life. This practice offers us an opportunity to meet them. They're always with us wherever we go. As we settle the distractions, as we become more and more face-to-face -face with this difficult matter, we can rely, we can utilize the support of our community. We can utilize the support of this form. We can utilize the support of a teacher to help us just sit with it. I think the metaphor of this zendo is such a perfect one. You have a room full of people who are willing to sit beside you 
through whatever it is that you need to sit through. They're not going anywhere. All we need to do, we don't need to dig stuff up. We don't need to go churning around to find things. All we need to do is simply sit. And these things of their own accord, at their own time, arise. Our practice in Zen is to just sit with them. Not seeking them out and not avoiding them. When these things arise, when these sensations, thoughts, feelings arise, we simply allow them to be. We embrace them, recognizing them as nothing other than our own content. And we just sit. Genjo Osho uses the term combust. And this practice in many ways is just like a crucible through which we burn off this difficult matter and find the strength and the will to transform. This practice is one of awakening familiarizing ourselves with ourselves, realizing who we truly are, and taking up the challenge to manifest our complete potential, waking up. We call this person on the Buddha, on the Butsudan, on the altar here, the Buddha. And Buddha means the one who is awake. We don't bow because of some historical person in India. We bow because we recognize that each of us has the capacity to manifest our complete potential. Each of us is a Buddha. We need only wake up. <laughs> 